How's it going everybody? Nick here. Welcome back to another Payday video. Today, we're going to be taking a look at Dev Diary 3. And in this video specifically, the devs are going to allow us to explore a little bit of the combat coming up in Payday 3. In my opinion, this is a really exciting episode that tells a lot about how the game is going to function or might function. So I hope you guys uh, enjoy my thoughts and my reaction to this video and just enjoy the dev diary as well to see kind of where the future is going to be leading us for Payday 3. Before we get into the video, just wanted to give a few quick shout outs specifically to the guys in the Discord, Addy, Drelode, Stalin, Demonus, Samurai, and more that I'm probably forgetting that always assist in making videos, etc. Thank you guys so much you guys are a huge help and you always are showing encouragement to me and helping me uh, make payday videos so i'll forever be grateful for you guys i do want to give another shout out to addy specifically uh he's been making awesome analysis videos over on his channel including analysis on uh, the nollies videos that have recently come out and he also has already made one on this dev diary that we're looking at today so if you want more payday content go check out his videos i have a link down in the description below go check them out and uh, be sure to show some love to a fellow heister Besides that, guys, I think that's it for me. If you enjoy this video and want more payday content, be sure to subscribe so I know to keep getting out more payday content for you guys. And for everyone that's kind of looking forward to more build videos, just want to let you know I do have something coming soon. So be on the lookout for that as well. And I hope you guys enjoyed that video as well. Anyways, I appreciate all you guys that show support on my videos, show support for me, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace out. So, um, yeah, we're going to be looking at combat today hopefully it is good so let's just go ahead and take a look man no time to no time to waste might have turned it up i, mean, I don't, I don't know. know everything that those are those though do we want to tell them everything yes you do want to tell us everything all right we weren't specifically looking to fix payday the heist for payday 2 we feel like those games have their own identity i am Mildred kovacevic also known as mio i am senior game I like that name dude at starbreeze uh on launch payday 3 will have four difficulties we have okay. normal hard very hard and overkill the okay. general intention is if you're just starting out the game and you're still learning how to play payday 3 we recommend you start off with normal once you're used to that you can move okay. to hard mode and hard is sort of our default difficulty while you're still leveling up if after you understand how the game works very hard is our difficulty where you progress so just i mean just to like i i guess just rehash what they've already said but that's the same as what with payday the heist and payday 2 right so we've had uh normal hard very hard overkill right w wasn't that the same in in uh payday the heist as well where we had those four difficulties technically i guess nothing new there i I'm curious to see, because we know that they've switched up like skills, perk decks, things like that. I don't even think we have perk decks anymore. So I'm interested to see like how they're going to scale the difficulties because we can look at Payday 2 and see like, if I play on Overkill on Payday 2, it's extremely easy. It is very easy for me, right? Because I've been playing on Death Wish and Death Sentence for so long. So I'm inter interested to see how they're gonna scale the difficulties and like actually, you know, make it difficult. <laughs> At least at the beginning of the game, especially for those that are veterans, but we'll see. Just enough through the game where you have a loadout you're comfortable with. If you're a veteran player, you'll probably be playing very hard in default. Overkill in Payday 3 is planned to be a brutal, unfair difficulty. Okay. That's what we want that. So we want that. In terms of enemies, uh, one of the bigger changes people will find is that we don't segregate enemies based on the difficulty you're playing. Nice. Uh, what we want is. Uh, players to be able to experience any part of the game uh, across all difficulties. So nice. what we instead do is I like that. Uh, we play with the enemy numbers and we play with their accuracy and damage. Uh, mm -hmm. One other thing that people will notice is we don't actually uh, change their health values between the difficulties. And this is because we want to encourage people to be able to play with each other. There's one feeling we want to avoid is a situation where you have to play on an easier difficulty and be bored and mm. or they have to play on a hard, harder difficulty and be overwhelmed. The one thing that uh, matters a lot is the movement. Wait, the hold up. Wait, what? I don't know if I fully understood that. Okay, maybe they're gonna explain it to me after. I'm, I'm utterly confused at this statement. They're not changing the health values of the enemies. Does that mean that we're doing more damage? based on what difficulty we are on and we're also taking less damage based on what difficulty we're on so they don't really 
adjust the enemies besides the amount of times that they're or the amount of enemies or special units whatever that you have coming in per difficulty as well as how accurate they are and how much damage they do that's my understanding but that their health values stay the same so that's really that's interesting i don't know if that's how it is in the other games i'm assuming it's not because as far as i understand at least in payday 2 the harder the difficulty that you go the more health that these enemies have and you can see that with mods right where it shows uh even like the new heist for example where you have the final boss is 26,000 health in uh whatever the new heist is i can't remember right now off the top of my head crude awakening there we go so i don't know that's interesting i'll have to i'll have to see how that one thing out. that uh, matters a lot is the movement in the game where you yeah. have sliding and uh, mantling and vaulting and all these other movement options for you as why does everybody at overkill and starbreeze have nice beards this guy's got a killer beard dude i like it player uh, my name is ima Karlström. i'm a senior game designer here at starbreeze mm -hmm. your armor affects the player's total weight as a base but then also other things can affect that weight uh, this allows you as a player to be uh, faster what? or slower, depending on uh, what you have. I guess it the bigger change are on. Okay, stop. So, there's a lot in here. <laughs> we already know like with Payday 2, right? It doesn't really matter. Uh, I can't say it doesn't really matter, but most weapons don't affect your movement speed right and it used to just be sorry it used to just be that armor was what would affect your movement speed before that's really interesting <laughs> so now it's not just limited to armor at least my understanding is is that it's everything that you have equipped is what's going to affect your movement speed how fast you can move slide etc you actually have more of a reason if they're still going like the dodge route you'll actually have more of a reason to be like oh you know dodge may not be as good as having all this armor but i can move way faster i can vault i can get behind cover way faster things like that which i mean you kind of get paid too with with armor right so then it kind of makes you have to think about what weapons you're going to take things like that so i don't know i'm interested to see how that how that'll turn out too on the, see with the armor armor system that the player has i'm martin van i am again another killer beard what is going on a lead gameplay programmer the armor is built up of shards so you can kind of you, you have like specific uh, components that can be broken down by you know getting shot at it can right. recoup but if you lose one you lost it forever uh not forever you can still get it back from uh, armor bag an armor bag what we have the doctor bag or medic bag in in pay to the health oh uh, is not regenerating at all it's just you know going down as soon as you lost the armor you start losing the health so we Okay, so we've got what is there? There's an, the armor bag in Payday too, right? Is what allows you to like you can start the heist in a suit, and then you can use the armor bag and put on uh, like an ICTV or whatever. So now you use that to replenish your armor. And what he was saying was, once your armor's gone, it's gone, unless you use an armor bag. That's definitely a, a different way to play that, right? We're used to your armor regenerating after a certain period of time, depending on what your skills are, your perk deck, uh, what kind of armor that you're bringing, and the more armor that you have, the longer it takes typically to uh, refill. But the less armor that you have, the faster it refills, but obviously the less armor that you have. So you might only be able to take one shot, whereas the ICB might be able to take two or, you know, whatever. I don't know how to feel about it yet. That's, that's all I can say, I guess. I don't know how to feel about it yet. We'll have to see how it plays out. You also have different things affecting different health bars at any time. So for example, uh, your standard enemies, if they shoot you, they will first hit the armor, but uh, certain special enemies will circumvent that. So you can't just rely on uh, stacking armor and not worrying about health. Health is also a resource you need to pay attention to. Okay. To go over what's right. new about enemies. That, that all um, makes sense to me. First, I just want to explain how we categorize the enemies internally. So we cool. have three categories we have the common enemies so that's your bread and butter uh, SWAT and heavy SWAT yeah uh, then we have what we call the uncommon enemies uh, internally that is the shield and the sniper and then okay. we have the specials and they're there to uh, break the pace that's a really blurry image can we just talk about how the cloakers look absolutely sick in this game i love the way they look dude yeah they look they look really cool i love their design oh so you lo lost a respect for the bulldozer yeah in pd3 we are upping him again 
uh -oh. not like it's only getting more health or more spongy. He has a couple of new behaviors as well that, that might surprise the players. One okay. of the behaviors is uh, the bull rush. You might stand there, shoot at him, you might be... We saw this in the trailer. In a different direction, and then he just can decide to bull rush you. And that's, that's crazy. Would, uh, you know, tackle you, make you immobile for a while. Same thing if you get too close to him. If you walk up to him, he will kick you. I mean, the respect Ooh. for him should be back in Pay 3. This is true for a dozer, but also true for all our specials. If you really, really, really hate a certain special, you can build something that basically deletes them for you from the game. So if you really hate the dozer and you never want to see a dozer again, you can have a build that consistently three shots the dozer, but you will be weaker in other aspects of the game. And this is where it cool. goes into playing with your friends, right? You can be the dozer deleter or one of your friends uh, then can be the squad deleter. It's all about cooperation and trying to find that's cool. a way to that's, the That's team. a... I mean, you have that kind of now in Payday 2. Things have... I mean, we, we can talk in circles about this, right? But, I mean, things have gotten to the point in Payday 2 where you can make a build and it's so well-rounded that you are an everything deleter. You're not a you're not a bulldozer deleter. You're not a SWAT deleter. You're an everything deleter. <laughs> and I think it's because of perk decks right you have things like stoic where you're constantly replenishing health and things like hacker where you're replenishing health and you're immobilizing every unit in the game so i think that's encouraging and i hope it stays that way i don't want these like super strong things to come back like we've had in payday 2 for a long time it was fun while it lasted time to move on i'm looking forward to maybe more of a payday 2 pace with payday the heist uh more more pay to the heist combat, I guess is what I'm trying to say, which is kind of seems the direction that they're going in with just like different features. We'll see. We'll see. I'm I'm looking forward to that. And I think it it makes it more fun. Like it's almost like it's part of the pre-planning. Like you can be like, yeah, I'll bring the, I don't know, the sniper to, to take down dozers or, you know, whatever. So I think that's cool. So the Nader is a new enemy type. He Ooh. has a bunch of gas grenades on him and flashbangs. So we he like will enemy new take enemy the types. gas grenade and throw it where the players are. And this will create a gas cloud that exists for a certain amount of time. While you're in that cloud, you cannot sprint and you will take damage over time directly to your health. Oh, that's annoying. I love it. Zapper is very similar to how he used to be. We have made some smaller changes to how the stun works. You will have first a partial stun where you can still shoot back and move your aim and try to free yourself. But if you don't manage to do that, you will enter a full uh, stun. Cloakers have had a really big update. Cool. I would argue that they've gotten the most love, even though they don't deserve it because nobody likes cloakers. <laughs> we want the cloaker to feel like a bully, so he now we has love cloakers. two nightstick bracers. He looks great. If you leave a deployable unattended and he walks past it, he will melt it with a bottle of acid because he's a toxic person. Like that. Yo, that's a big change to cloakers, man. That does... I like that change a lot. That makes you want to kill the cloakers, right? Like, you can... I feel like in Payday 2, we've got to the point where you can just, like, one-shot cloakers, keep moving. You're like, all right, you know, whatever. They were there. Even, like, in D-Side, you could do that. They're not even a threat, really, anymore. So this is more like... Okay, I hear a cloaker. I know my doctor bag's right there. We have a bunch more of Doc heels or, or heels or whatever that uh, I really don't want him to destroy. <laughs> so that's a really cool change. I like that. One really neat uh, improvement is on um, the shield enemies. The other swords have a behavior where they understand the shield much, much better. So they can okay. actually walk behind this, this guy. That's cool. As a cover. Stand behind him. Uh, go out, shoot at the play, go Wow, out, that's cool. So what? A little bit more interesting uh, dynamic. Yeah. The shield is really not there to kill you. He has a handgun, but he's mostly there to support other units. So if you have just a solo shield, he is probably annoying. If you have a shield that's covering for multiple enemies, then he's actually dangerous. I like that change as well. Um, I like that it's more that he's just kind of a nuisance. I mean, they're a nuisance in, in Payday 2 as well. It's almost like they do a ton of damage, right? And I, I can't remember the exact stats. I can't keep all of the, like, damage and, like, health things in my head. But I know that the, the shield does a ridiculous amount of damage, right? It's unreal. <laughs>
<laughs> so I like that change. I like that they're focusing more on him supporting other units, which is what I feel like shield should be anyways. Cool, cool change. When we are picking the weapons that goes into the game, we are looking at a lot of different things. What is the sort of perception of a weapon in the real world? And what do we need to fulfill a certain gameplay element? So the weapon modding in PD3 is uh, very similar to PD2 in the aspect of like you can pick your own site, your magazines, stocks, etc. Cool. Um, but the way you get them is. Sorry, hold up. Overkill. If you ever see this video, and I know that you will, I'm just kidding. Please give us this gun range. Give us that gun range so that we can see how much damage we're doing. Let us adjust it according to difficulty. Let us put in different units so we can adjust that instead of having to download a mod, which most of us have at this point. Instead of us downloading a mod, just give us this range. This looks great. <laughs> Sorry, side note. It's a little bit different. So each gun has their own progression and their own progression path where you as a player uh, as play the game uh, as you gain experience with that gun and as you use it throughout multiple heists, then you will unlock more options and you will be able to find new ways to okay. play with it. Yeah, so again, that's I feel like that's pretty um, standard now for games today. Most shooters that you play, you're gonna be upgrading your weapons. Even uh, we've been playing a lot of DRG. So even like DRG, um, you know, you upgrade all of your weapons, things of that nature. Call of Duty, I don't know. I can't think of other games right now, but that's very common. I don't know how I feel about that yet in Payday 2, but it does give us something else that we are going to work on and progress and be like, oh, I want this sight. Oh, I want this muzzle or this attachment. Oh, I need to upgrade to get the suppressor, which is another thing. If we're focusing on stealth, do we get like these standard suppressors at the beginning? Eh, I don't know. One thing that we have in Payday 3 is uh, preset weapons. These are essentially weapons that come pre-configured with uh, already a set of mods. Okay, uh, well, on them, answer my question. Also a unique look that you can't get otherwise. Something that is important when you're playing with the preset weapons is that even though you're playing with these preset weapons, you're still progressing the base weapon That's cool. levels. And that's nice. a really important factor, so you never lose out on that progression. We are just saying like, hey, you're playing with this gun? Cool, you're gaining experience too. Nice. That's so a good touch. So the overkill weapons uh, in the game, they are essentially your big power-up. It's something that you gain progress toward during a heist when you are completing objectives. Oh. And then as you gain this progress at some point, then later you can call in your overkill weapon. This is something that is supposed to be a real wow. power upgrade for you and help you get out of that sticky situation. We have a recoil system that is a spray. Rip the Thanatos. <laughs> it looks like that was a Thanatos. I don't know, dude. Okay, so that's definitely different. That is uh, way more an arcadey feel. Um, so it looks like the Thanatos is closer to, um, which is also the site that we saw in the trailer, right? Where it has like the, the thermal like outlines. Seems to be a power up. So does the grenade launcher. They didn't show any other ones at least yet. So we'll see what else they show. If they do show anything else in this uh, specific dev diary. Um, I don't know how to feel about that either. These are still just things that I'm going to have to like try out for myself to really determine like, oh yeah, this is awesome. Or eh, I don't like that so much, but it's, it's different. It's a different route and I'm okay with it. I'm okay with the idea. This definitely seems is more like an arcadey uh feel to payday specifically with like sliding the maneuvering and everything really fast paced and as you're getting kills or doing objectives whatever then you're getting this overkill power up weapon or whatever regardless i still think it looks pretty cool ray pattern and the gun kick based system that allows you to essentially control your recoil in certain aspects but uh, there are always a little bit of randomization and that you can't control. But with that said, you can learn Ooh, and master the weapons and find a weapon that really suits your personality and what you want to play with. It's not about finding a specific breakpoint in a game where you want to reach a specific stat number, as in P2 nice. necessarily. Instead, That's cool. it's about what you enjoy in your combat situations. I like and how that. You want to engage with it. We won. We won. Us people, us idiots that don't know these stats by memory or whatever, dude. We won. We've done it, lads. <laughs> I am so sick of like all of those stats, memorizing all that. And if you have that down to memory, like, of course, that's really impressive. I'm tired of looking up a guide every time to be like, nope. 
doesn't hit it gotta move on <laughs> That's it. Can't you not using that gun? Nope. Can't do that one. So this definitely, I, I like, I like that a lot. And I think that's a thoughtful change that they've put into their weapon system. Um, that I think a lot of new players and veterans are going to enjoy. So good job overkill. So, uh, there are a couple of different gadgets. You have ECM jammer, uh, that blocks the enemy it's so tiny alert. it also blocks cameras you have a mini camera that you can place and then you can uh, at any time you can place it uh, on people these camera uh the idea is uh, what that you as a team uh, equip different ones and you get different uh, possibilities within the heist that's insane I throwing knives we have oh i guess we had throwing knives but i guess confirmed foundation uh i think it's a good uh first step i, I would like the community to explore the opportunities of payday and how the different ways you can approach a heist and also how their choices in the game both when it comes to loadout and their actions actually has an impact i would like to see uh players complain about their hatred towards the <laughs> enemies in particular um i know that the cloaker is much hated and i hope people learn to hate him even more um I, I like this guy. Some cool skill Mio? Though. I think his name is Mio. Is that right? Mio hasn't thought about this. This is gonna break the game. You'll fix it in post. <laughs> <laughs> Alright guys. So, final thoughts. I think that Payday, uh, or I think that Overkill at least, is moving in a good direction. I was just talking to uh, our live chat over on kick.com slash daysluxe. Please go follow if you haven't already. But I think that what they're doing is moving in a good direction and even something that like souls brought up in our chat was that there looks like they're moving more towards like a modernized um or i think dre said like a modernized payday the heist and then Souls said you know it's like a kind of more of a tactical shooter obviously still very arcadey very like run around fast paced things like that so it's not like rainbow six siege or nothing it is a little bit more tactical like with the units hiding behind the shields you have specials like bulldozers and cloakers having more abilities things that they're doing that feel like an actual nuisance or like oh that's a cloaker i'm in trouble or oh that's a dozer he is gonna hurt me if i get too close he might kick me so i think that's really cool with the units and something that i'm personally really excited for with the changes to the weapons i think are also really exciting specifically being able i think the gun progression is cool being able to as you upgrade your weapons um or as you level them up as you're using them in heist things like that you're going to get more attachments better things that you can use them with but then you also have these overkill presets so that if you were like man i really want to sight on this a AK-47, then you can use this overkill preset that has a sight on it and it's still going to upgrade or level up your base weapon so i think all of these changes that they've done are really cool it seems like overkill really cares about their combat they really want it to be fun they want their special units to be fun and new and feel fresh and like you're actually supposed to be scared of the dozer now i think that's really exciting i think all this stuff is really cool and i'm really excited to see you know what they do in the future so anyways i think that's it for me guys thank you so much for watching and i'll see you in the next dev diary